everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Sorry it's been quite a while since I last filmed. I've been so caught up in my podcast, especially through April when I was doing two interviews a week. I interview authors on my podcast called Tea and Tattle and because so many writers are having such a difficult time at the moment with um, publishing and launching books during lockdown when all the bookshops are closed and it's harder to order books. I've been trying to do my best to support writers by interviewing as many of them as I can through my podcast. But it did leave me a little bit exhausted, I have to admit, and also a bit tired of my own voice in all honesty. So I enjoyed actually just stepping away and having a little bit of a break but I'm so enjoying YouTube right now so I'm really glad to be back filming again and I'll try to um, keep going with several more videos coming up. My podcast is finishing for the season next Tuesday so I'll have a lot more time after that which I'm looking forward to as well. But anyway, as it meant that I missed filming my kind of tea and tattle chat in April and we're already getting towards the end of May, I, I don't know how that happened, I really don't. So what I thought I would do today is a sort of monthly favourites kind of video and I'll share some of the things I've been enjoying throughout April and May as we're so far into May and just combine these two months and tell you about some of the things that I've been loving lately and that's been keeping me happy and one of those things is this beautiful mug that was designed for Cutter Brooks which is a shop in Oxfordshire and I've never been to the shop but I really want to go it looks absolutely beautiful. If you're a fan of English countryside style, then this is a shop you have to visit once we can all go shopping again. And the shop is owned by a woman called Amanda Brooks, who is American, but she moved to the UK quite a few years ago. She wrote this lovely book, Farm From Home. And I really recommend this actually, it's a lovely sort of seasonal guide to a typical year for Amanda. It says a year of stories, pictures and recipes from a city girl in the country. So she moved I think from New York City to a farmhouse in Oxfordshire and she talks about why she loves the English countryside, why she made that move, what her life as a country girl now is like. And um, it starts off in June, so it's great for next month. Um, and I love the kind of recipes and the photographs and like just the snippets that she shares from her English countryside life. It's a really inspiring and sort of aspirational type book, I suppose, but it's also just really beautiful to look at. So I really recommend this. And Amanda has incredible taste. Like I love her style, I love her taste. And that really comes out with her shop called Cutter Brooks. I mean, it's a, it's a homeware, and I think she does a bit of fashion as well. And everything in the shop just looks exquisite. I follow the shop account on Instagram and I'm always just drooling over everything. So when I saw this Cutter Brooks mug pop up, I had to get it. And I just think it's so pretty. I really love it. And to me, they look a bit like peonies. And as we're in peony season at the moment, it was a really lovely purchase. So I'm loving that mug right now. I might just have a sip of my tea. Mm. Yes, so really thrilled with that. And then I think in April, I got this book called Blooming Flowers, A Seasonal History of Plants and People by Cassia Body. And this is such a gorgeous book. If you love flowers like I do, I so recommend this one. For one thing, it's beautiful in and of itself. I love the end papers. And there's so many illustrations um, that are done in colour all throughout the book. It's really 
absolutely gorgeous and really fascinating and Cassia takes each season so this starts with spring and she chooses some flowers from each season and she writes about the history of these plants and the cultural significance of these flowers as well and I'm learning so much already from reading this it really is such an interesting read I highly recommend it uh, my mum started reading it as well and she was so enjoying it too so this has been a wonderful book to read in the spring as we start to head into summer and yes I highly recommend this one then I also got this the Almanac Journal by Leah Leandertz. I'm sorry, that's probably not how you pronounce her last name. But Leah is the woman behind the sort of Almanac books that have been so popular over the last few years. I really love them. And so when I saw this journal, um, I had to order it because I think it just looks charming. I might start using it in September as that always feels like a bit of a new year to me and um this very much kind of guides you a bit through the year and activities to do through the year this is called first and last so it's like noting down the date that you see the first primrose magnolia asparagus bumblebee bluebell spider's web that sort of thing that takes you through the year I love this because I feel it just encourages you to notice the outdoors more and to live in the moment a bit more because of that and just be mindful of your surroundings and the pace of the seasons and what's happening around you in nature and I think that's a lovely way to do it. I also love the illustrations um, all through the book. I think they're beautiful and they're by a woman called Rachel Grant. So I looked up Rachel on Instagram and I found her website through it and I'm following her on Instagram now and I just love her artwork so much and I ended up ordering one of her prints which I'll show you. I got this one by her and I just think that's really beautiful. I mean, I love florals, so I have a real weakness for any illustration that's of like lovely florals. And I just thought this was so sweet. And I loved the little tin of tea as well, because you know I'm a big tea drinker. So this just really spoke to me. And I like to have little sort of prints like this that I can sort of easily change through the seasons so I'm going to hang this one up as a lovely sort of summery print in my office I think it will look really pretty so I was so pleased with this and Rachel wrote a lovely little card um with the print when she said when she sent it which I thought was really sweet as well and it's so nice to be supporting creatives as much as one possibly can at the moment too so I was really delighted to be able to order this lovely print and then I was um, so happy to be sent the latest Load Stars anthology which is their Mexico issue um, I know the editor of Load Stars Liz quite well I interviewed her years ago on my podcast on tea and tattle and um i've met up with liz since that and load stars anthologies are wonderful for people who love to travel i know we're all doing armchair travel at the moment but these anthologies are so inspiring for that with every issue um, they examine one particular country, which I think is a lovely way to do a travel journal. So this latest issue, which is number 13, is all about Mexico, which isn't somewhere I've ever been to, actually. So all the more fascinating to look through it. And the photographs and the illustrations that are done for every issue are really gorgeous. And there's always an interesting mix of articles as well and it just gives you a wonderful taste of the country that's the topic for each issue so I think they do such a good job um, with these and I was really grateful to be sent this Mexico issue and I've been really enjoying looking through this
Then I also got uh, another surprise gift in the post that I was so thrilled about. Let me get it. So I know the artist Christopher Brown and he sent me this little um, print in the post which was such a wonderful surprise. I love Christopher Brown's artwork. Um, if you live in London and you're a fan of Gail's Bakery then you might recognise his style because he does a lot of the artwork for Gail's like on their packaging and sort of promotional things and stuff and um, I think he's just such a talented artist. He did a wonderful book too called um, an alphabet of London that he illustrated and I'll, I'll link that in the description box down below so you can check that out but I went to a pop-up of um, Chris's years ago and I interviewed him on my blog so got to know him a little bit through that and yes it was just such a lovely surprise to receive this in the post and it really made my day and I thought how sweet of him it, it was to be sending out these like little prints to people I think getting a nice surprise like that in the post at the moment can really make such a difference to someone's day so if you are a talented artist and can actually do something beautiful you know unlike me <laughs> then what a lovely way to just brighten someone's day at the moment um, and uh, the fact that he put for Miranda on it just really really made my day so I can't wait to get this framed and put up soon because I think it's so lovely I love this Eliz Elizabethan woman I think that's so <laughs> so stylish and so lovely and then um, on my last sort of tea and tattle video I spoke about wanting to do some sort of patchwork quilting and wanting to get into that. Now I admit I just haven't really had the headspace or even much time lately to start a new project like that but so many of you got in touch with really helpful suggestions for me about um, brands to look out and things to look out for to help me get into quilting. So thank you so much um, for those of you who did get in touch and I took note of all your advice and I wanted to share some of the things that I got um, that I'm really looking forward to using and that will hopefully help other people if you're also interested in looking into quilting and looking into patchwork. Um, I think these things look great. So someone, sorry I can't remember who, but someone very kindly recommended Ashmead Designs to me and it's such a great resource for all things patchwork. I wanted to start with a pin cushion and I saw that they have this ready-made kit available um, as a little, it's called the Estelle pin cushion and it's got everything there, it's all cut out already too so it's a, it's a real cheats like <laughs> a starter kit but as this will be my very first project I'm fine with that so I think that this looks perfect for me to just start with a sort of easy little kit like this and get the hang of patchwork a little bit but for when I move on to a bit more ambitious projects I got um, these also from Ashmi Designs I'll put a link to all of this in the description box and these are pre-cut um, hexagons which are actually made of fabric so a lot of quilting involves sort of like card or uh, paper hexagons that you um, use to sew over and um, these can actually stay in you know you normally remove the paper ones but these can actually stay in which just makes the job quite a lot quicker and as you can see these are also already cut so I'm all for ways to kind of do things a bit more quickly but still have a lovely finished result you know I'm not someone who has to do it altogether the authentic way especially when I'm just starting out so I was really happy to be recommended these and I think they look really great so I think this will be very helpful when I want to um, well do a bit more of an ambitious project and I like the fact that you can leave the fabric in and they say like if you're doing a quilt it just makes it a little bit sort of fluffier a bit like thicker which actually I think would be really nice so 
I'm really curious about these, but I did also get some um, paper hexagons as well, and they are already um, pre-cut, but I think they'll be interesting to kind of try both ways and see what I end up liking, and also just to get the hang of doing both. So um, I got these as well, these are from Dritz Quilting. And they're a bit of a bigger size too, which I think will be useful as well. So sort of getting myself ready. And then um, someone also recommended that I get um, a milliner needle um, because they said that that really helped with um, sewing in patchwork, that they found that that was really good. So I got these, I think they're like Japanese um, milliner's needles and um, I'm looking forward to sewing with these. I have done embroidery and things before. These needles look very, very thin, um, but I, I think the person said that they are like a little bit more flexible, like slightly bendy. I think that's what they said, I'm trying to remember. Um, but I think that's meant to help with quilting as well. So that does sound good. So I've got myself ready with these things. So I'm really looking forward to giving it all a try and I'm hoping to be able to soon especially once um I finish I finish the podcast for the season because that just means that I have a lot more time um so I'm looking forward to trying a new project then and then I was waiting um for weeks to get this in the post I've ordered these ages ago but I'm a huge fan of um Alicia Paulson, who is an American um, designer. Uh, she lives in Seattle and she's an incredible sort of craftswoman. She designs lots of kits like cross uh, cross stitch and also little fabric kits and things like that. I have her Christmas ornament kits. I've bought those over the years, for instance, and I've brought her I've bought her cross stitch kits in the past and I really love them. This one is called Things of Spring, and I ordered it um, as soon as it came out, I think, because her kits tend to sell out really quickly, and it took a while to come, but I was still so grateful that she sent it, um, and so I got it in the end, and I can't wait to make it. I'll try and... I hope you can see that. It's got all these little elements of spring, which I think is really lovely. Like there's an umbrella, there's a bunch of daffodils, there's a teacup and it looks like there's a little rabbit behind it, and um, a robin pulling up a worm, hunter boots. <laughs> I just I just love it and I really like cross stitch and it's quite an easy thing to do even though it might be a bit rusty. So I'm looking forward to settling in to doing a bit of cross stitch and listening to an audio book at the same time. I really like to do that. It's quite a relaxing activity for me. But anyway, I think that's everything now. All of the things that I've been loving in April and also um, throughout May. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what things have been brightening your weeks recently. I'd love to hear about some of the things that you've been loving. If you like the look of any of the things I've spoken about today. But thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again soon with another video. Do give this one a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'd also love it if you subscribe to my channel which you can do by clicking my face that pops up just around here. But yeah thanks again for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye!